Now, it is the moment of truth for the country on Monday as the Apex Court delivers its judgment on the fate of the August 9th presidential election. Now, with a stroke of a pen, the seven-judge bench can return the nation back to the polls or elevate President-elect William Ruto as the country's fifth president. Both camps, the Azimio La Umoja, One Kenya Coalition Party, and the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance are waiting for the judgment with bated breath. Samogina reports. The Supreme Court has the country's fate at its hands when the seven judges deliver their judgment on Monday. <laughs> Azmi Olamoja presidential candidate Raila Odinga contested the victory of President-elect William Ruto, petitioning the court to nullify the election. Azmi presented to the Apex Court 24 issues, including the nullification of the election, a declaration that Odinga won the election, and that IEBC chairman Wafula Chebukati bungled the election and should be found unfit to hold office. But the Supreme Court distilled and condensed all the issues into nine. Key among them, whether President-elect William Ruto met the constitutional threshold that requires a winning presidential candidate to garner more than half of the total votes cast and at least 25% in 24 counties is also a key issue for determination by the judges. They will also ascertain if there were illegalities and irregularities in the August 9th presidential race and whether they were grave enough to affect the final election outcome. The judges will be expected to answer whether the election technology deployed by IEBC to conduct the 2022 State House race met the standards of integrity, verifiability, security and transparency to guarantee accurate and verifiable results. With results transmission from the 46,229 polling stations to the IEBC portal, forming a substantial part of the submission by the legal teams, Kome and her six colleagues will determine whether there was interference with uploading and transmission of Forms 34A that were used to enter presidential election results. The judges will also rule on whether there were differences in the forms uploaded on the IEBC public portal by presiding officers in the polling stations with copies of the results declaration forms given to agents of the four presidential candidates. The judges will also determine whether the forms uploaded on the public portal were similar to the physical documents submitted to the National Tallying Center at the Bombers of Kenya by returning officers alongside Forms 34B that were used to tabulate results at the constituency level. Another key issue for determination by the judges is whether the postponement of gubernatorial elections in Kakamega and Mombasa counties on the eve of the general election was a deliberate plan to suppress voter turnout and whether Azimiola Moja presidential candidate Raila Odinga was disadvantaged by their decision. Likewise, the Supreme Court judges will be expected to determine if there was an unexplained difference between the number of votes garnered by the four presidential candidates and those received by candidates contesting for other five elected positions, that is the 47 governors, senator and women representative seats, national assembly member in the 290 constituencies and the 1,450 MCS slots. The verification, tallying and declaration of presidential results at the Bombers of Kenya is also among the issues for determination by the judges. Whether the excess complied with the constitutional provisions. Should the judges find no merit in the petition, they will affirm Ruto's election and set the stage for his swearing-in ceremony as the country's fifth president on the 13th of September. And should they allow the petition, Ruto's declaration as president-elect will be nullified and a repeat set out stress conducted within 60 days. Samogino Citizen TV, Nairobi.